what's going on everyone okay so when we last left off uh we had we were kind of trying to deal with that decimal place um and we had this i mean this function to me is starting to look a little ugly i'm not sure how much we can clean it up we'll do at least a little bit of work on cleaning that up um, but also i found another bug as i was dealing with this um, so here's an example 2.36.2 Obviously, these can quickly stop being numbers. Um, and so we actually, we don't want to allow a decimal place if there's already one, uh, one already exists. Just like what we're doing with the zero, uh, we don't want to allow that. So that's, uh, we're actually going to do two things, but that's going to, we're going to go back to this function right here. And we're going to clean this up. So there's at least two situations besides this guard statement, uh, there's at least two situations where we need to return early, where we just want to ignore everything else. So that first one, exactly what's written up there. So if uh, text is zero uh, and display string is zero, we want to return, okay? But we also want to do it if the text string is the decimal place and the display string already contains a decimal place, then we're just going to return. We don't want to do any more logic there. So uh, I'm going to add extra parentheses around here just so that it's clear what I'm doing. But so if this situation happens, we want to return or if if this situation happens where text equals, like I said, decimal place and display string contains, like if it already contains a decimal place, then we wanna return. So let's see if we can clean that up a little bit. Okay, now we don't need this extra part. We're gonna try not to break anything. probably clean this up even more. Okay, so this condition was if uh, text string equals the dot, the decimal, and display string equals zero, then we still wanna reset, or you're like, or we don't wanna reset. We wanna mark resetting as false. We wanna make sure that we don't reset after this. Decimal is a valid uh, value, but we do wanna append and then we want to update our uh, our label. And th but then we want to return because we want to skip. We kind of want to skip the rest of this. And there's, there's possibly a better way of doing this. I definitely it would definitely help if I had some comments because this is getting. You could have you could mix this in with like a giant if else if that's what if that's what we wanted to do. I don't know if that helps anything, but let's see what that looks like now. Okay, two dot, two dot. Okay, that's good. We don't want it to, to add extra decimal places. We still want to make sure that that zero, we can't add multiple zeros. That's good. So now two dot three plus three dot two equals 5.5. Okay, that still seems like it's working. Uh, nine divided by three, uh, three, nine divided by two, 4.5, okay, so it still seems like everything's working. Two plus five, clear that and add it to nine is 11. Okay, so we're looking pretty good there. Uh, this solution, or the, the issue with this is also uh, pretty easy. There's, again, we have lots of different ways to fix this. Um, we probably already have an issue in the code like we're building a calculator, but it's not like a super scientific calculator. Uh, it's more just since we're doing it to kind of learn the tools, we care a little bit less about if it's completely accurate. It's not a scientific calculator, but we can at least do something with this. One of the things we can do is we can click on this label. We can uh, 
uh, tell it to do an auto shrink, right? So fixed font size means it won't auto shrink and then it's just gonna truncate or just do those ellipses on the end. The thing that we can do, is we can just offer a few more numbers. Maybe that's, that's, maybe that's as good as we can get. Uh, but what we can do is just do minimum font size. We can actually specify that it shrinks a little bit, right? In this case, it's gonna shrink by half. We can do a minimum font size or a minimum font scale. So we are at 50 right now. So the minimum it's gonna be is 0.5 times that. So uh, that's why it was 25. We could do it smaller if we wanted. So 0.3 times that. So now it's gonna allow us to shrink that text if we type, if we type too much. So we'll see that it shrinks a little bit. Uh, we're still gonna have some issues though, I'm sure. We st again, we're not building a scientific calculator, so we're not worrying about we're not worried about everything being super precise. If we start, if we have a number like this, this huge, our math still might be off anyway. So let's say I do plus two, right? Well, I mean maybe it's maybe it's correct. It, it's doing this math two point two 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 e to the seventeen. Um, yeah, I mean, again, like that's that is the decimal version of that if of that number, assuming it didn't like overflow or like w whatever. It, assuming there wasn't any math errors because it's a computer, but that's not bad for what we're doing. Um, so we solved that again. Close. I, I mean, you can choose it to be. To be even smaller if you want. At some point, we're still going to have that issue where we still get the ellipses. Maybe 50 font size is still good. Maybe nobody cares about that. Uh, really quick, we're going to learn about how to fix this issue right here. So the problem that we have is uh, we said we wanted it to be like a four by five scale or four by five ratio on here. That works really well on a screen like this, but it doesn't work on iPad. And obviously it doesn't work when it's in landscape. So let's talk a little bit about screen sizes. Okay, I can close this, I can leave that open. Um, one of the things you'll notice down at the bottom, so I'm viewing this as, let me, let's close that one too. I'm viewing this as an iPhone 11. And then you'll kind of see this other thing uh, w, capital C, little h, capital R. And what this means is the width is compact and the height is regular, okay? So when, when iOS talks about screen sizes, they don't talk about necessarily pixels or pixel densities. It's a little bit different. They talk about the concept of compact and regular, okay? So if we click on this, we can kind of see Oh, sometimes it'll give it'll give me a list. If I click on something else, we'll see that list. Okay, so you'll see an iPad is regular, regular, and you can see like, well, it's still doing that four by five. It kind of fits well over here. As I start doing, yeah, oh, that still fits. I mean, that looks ridiculous to me. Uh, it still works. So you could do it like that if that's what you wanted. But you can kind of see it's like regular, regular. Uh, let's choose different phones. Compact regular, let's choose a really small one. Still says compact regular. If I change the orientation, you'll see it's, oh, iPhone 4 is maybe just compact, compact. Oh, oh interesting, yeah. iPhone 4 S with orientation landscape, it's uh, compact, compact, okay? So why is that important to us? This actually doesn't look too bad. But why is that important to us? Because so if I'm if I'm doing like an iPhone 11, or what, yeah, an iPhone 11 Pro Max, or just an iPhone 11, you'll see that it is width is compact and height is regular. But if I do the orientation, it is uh, width is regular and height is compact. This doesn't look perfectly right to me. Yeah, it's it doesn't it doesn't like the constraints here. Uh, Display top is 
greater than or equal to. Let's see. Let's see if we can fix that. It doesn't. It doesn't like that on landscape. Um, that wasn't what I wanted to fix anyway. The thing I wanted to fix is this aspect ratio. Maybe. Maybe this will fix anything. Everything actually. Okay. Uh, so one of the things that you can do over here in the inspector, you'll see. So like this data right here is, is the default. Okay. And so the default can be whatever you want. We started building everything on iPhone 11. So this default works for this compact width and regular height. Whenever you see a plus symbol here, we can actually change behavior. Like, so we can, we can change font sizes or we can change a constant of uh, we can change a constant of something like what is that? Oh, there was a little dot. Um, we can change the constant of something, or like here again, like I said, if we see this plus, we can add a variation for width and height, and then we can actually change the values of that. So, what does that look like? We do this aspect ratio. Well, our constant is zero because we're not using a constant on this. Um, on like a, a ratio and the, like the multiplier is that four, four to five or five to four, but we can't actually introduce a variation there. What we can do though, is add a variation on if this constraint is installed, if it's gonna be used or not, okay? So on compact and regular, we want it to be used, but let's say on width is regular and height is compact, we don't want it to be used. Okay, so let's see what happens here. We can actually just click on it and it should, yeah, okay. So that fixed our problem right there. Just by adding a variation based on if that four fifths constraint is, um, is gonna work on that type of screen. So let's run this and see. Okay, so just as expected, that works fine, right? So just the same math. But when we do landscape, now we can still do our same numbers or do our same whatever calculations, two plus two equals four. Nine divided by three equals three. Okay, so we can actually have variations on, like I said, font or colors, anything, um, maybe I shouldn't say colors, uh, anything with that plus symbol. So I guess, yeah, we can do, it looks like we can do colors, tints, variations on drawing, uh, even variations on if this button shows up, we can actually decide if this button shows up on different size screens. Okay, so it's not perfect on, on this size. We could change or install so we could do something, we could just do something else. We could add an, a different type of constraint, maybe like a one-to-one -one constraint on this big calculator. But uh, you could do that yourself if you want. I think it's pretty good. Uh, to me, it looks pretty good on a phone. Um, it's never really gonna look that great on an iPad. Well, I shouldn't say that. Maybe we could make it look good on an iPad. Uh, but anyway, for now, you get the idea. We can actually, let's just go back to that just so that you see it one more time. This aspect ratio, all we're doing is we added a variation for a different size screen where we installed, okay? For bigger screens with like a regular, regular, we would have to uninstall this one and install a new constraint. Again, like I said, maybe a one-to-one -one or something like that. Um, but I'll leave that to you so you can try that on your own. Okay, uh, let's see. So it's looking pretty good now. Is there anything else I'd like to do? I think, oh yeah, there's just that one last thing where I would like it to do two plus six plus five. So maybe when I actually do an operation, when I actually do an operation, I need to check to see if there's a saved value. So we can do that in the next episode. For now, let's make sure to save 
uh, to get. And we actually added a couple of things. What did we add? Uh, fixed, uh, multiple, yeah, multiple uh, decimal bug. Added support. Oh, oh, can't even spell. Support for uh, like widescreen. And then we cleaned up, I forget what else. We cleaned up another, just just some code. That was basically, that was kind of related to fixing that decimal bug. Um, okay, yeah, so let's push that. And then in the next episode, we'll, well, let's see, let's see what else we do in the next episode. Right. See you later.